Amen. Hello, guys. Amen, amen, amen. How are you? Thank you for joining this week's House to House Live. And um, you might be watching alone if you are. Why don't you call out to someone from the next room to come and join you? And if you need to pause or watch it by yourself now and bring somebody else around the table, I want to encourage you to do that because this is one, especially today, for the sharing. And if you're saying, you know what, I live alone, I'm here by myself, there's nobody else in the next room to call, why don't you share this post with somebody else right about now? I encourage you, let somebody else enjoy this moment with you in the presence of the Lord. We are gathered here in his name. This is House to House Live. This is done because we know the times that we're in. This is done because we know we need to continue to encourage one another. We need to continue to be equipped and to be exercised and to be expectant of the great and marvelous things that God is doing in this world. You see, I say it, great and marvelous things that God is doing in this world. Moses said in Deuteronomy, toward the end of his ministry here on earth, first time around, he said, ascribe greatness to our Lord, the rock. His word is perfect and all his ways are just. You see, the Lord is our rock. The Lord is the rock. And he never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so if the Lord's been good, he is good, and he will always be good. And he's always working great things in the favor, working things out to favor the ones who are called according to his purpose. And so that is the reason why we need to praise him. That is the reason why we need to let somebody else know that we're praising him. That is the reason why we need to encourage somebody to praise him for all the marvelous things that he's doing. Yes, we are in those days the Bible calls the perilous times we are in the perilous times but then at the same time even though we are in the perilous times one thing that we do know that the lord is still is still very much our shield and our buckler the lord is the protector of our souls the shepherd of our lives and so the confidence that we have is that no matter what happens there might be turmoil and chaos around us the Bible lets us know that many will fall, that a thousand may fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your left hand, but it is with only your eyes that you will behold the reward of the wicked. My name is Moses Anderson, lead pastor here at Communion House and the convener of this House to House Live, and I am so delighted to be here once again uh, to share the word of God with you, to bring you a message, not just of hope, but a battle cry, a call to assemble and take our place in our places in the battle because we're at war, ladies and gentlemen. We are at war. The enemy is looking uh, to strike one more blow as we have come to the end of the ages. And we, this is not the time to sit back and roll over because if we did, we may fall over. This is the time to take a stand and to gladly do so as well because it is an opportunity and a privilege to fight in this battle simply because we know that we were invited by the Lord Jesus Christ to come as co-laborers. We were invited to come and ride with him in the, into victory because we know as John the Beloved prophesied, he sees the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords and the King of kings riding into victory with tens of thousands of his saints. And that is the reason why it is a privilege. We're not just sitting at home and waiting for the crown to be delivered. We have the privilege of coming to battle ourselves and seeing it happen. So what do we do? We rejoice and give thanks to the Lord simply because we know that we have been invited to ride into victory, not to gamble, not to try it out, not to see whether we would win. No, we know that we have already won because we are the ones that received the crown in the end. And what was the attribute of those who received the crown? The Bible says the ones who overcame were given a crown of glory. So let us rejoice and exceedingly be glad. Now, if you're new to House to House Live, what is House to House Live? House to House Live is a segment that is put together by Communion House once every week, wherein we have a teaching that is about 30 minutes to an hour long, and it's designed for you to uh, access on demand when you have people around in your home, when it's just you and your family, or maybe even just you yourself, and you want to get a time of Bible study, a time of hearing uh, from another, 
especially another that the Lord has raised himself for such a time as this, as a voice crying in the wilderness, even the voice of him preparing the way of the Lord, so that you can come around and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is singing unto the churches. These Bible study seg segments are not based on a curriculum that's been drawn up uh, um, you know, by an institution, but these are prophetic teachings. And like I say here at Communion House, a lot of what we say now aren't for today. They are for tomorrow. So if you want to know the things for today, you may want to go back to our archives on YouTube, on Spotify, or maybe even on Facebook and listen to the things that we were saying months ago. Because by the grace of God, prophetically, just months ago, we described the things that are happening today. So I encourage you, don't just listen to this one. Go back into the archives and hear more of the things that the Lord himself has said about the times that we are in. The uproars, the, the stirring up the rumors of war and all of those things going on and the part that you should play, even in particular, the posture of your heart as, the, as a believer. I just concluded series titled uh, The Real Estate of Heaven has been one that's blessed me very greatly and others have given feedback as well and I know it's been a blessing, a tremendous blessing. And so if you haven't taken yourself if you haven't availed yourself of the privilege of going through the archives to listen to every single one of those messages in the series, I think there were a total number of seven teachings. You know, uh, they're, they're from parts one through six, but part five was broken into two, uh, 5A and B. So in total, we had seven teachings or seven episodes in the Real Estate of Heaven series. And I want to encourage you to go listen to it because it's such uh, an amazing uh, set of instructions. Or let me put it this way, the entire series contains some amazing and interesting set of instructions of what you need to do as believers. And I believe that the Lord will also have me remind you at this time, if you haven't listened to the seven things that we need to do beginning this week, as the Holy Spirit revealed to us on Sunday here at Communion House, please go take a listen. The entire service, I believe, was broadcast live, or most of it, I would say, was broadcast live. And you can catch that on demand via our website, Facebook profile, YouTube, and very soon on Spotify as well. But I want you to go take a listen because those seven things beginning with forgiving people aggressively that may have wronged you and wrapping up with five, six, and seven instructions that are connected together, or the fifth, the sixth, and seventh instruction connected together in one statement that says, be mindful not to be too careful so that you don't end up being fearful. I want to encourage you guys, if you missed that service, whether you missed it in person or you missed it online, please go and listen to it because the Lord has something to say to you in those instructions or through those seven things to do. And look, we cannot emphasize it enough. We cannot stress it enough. We know that is the word for now. Alrighty. So why do I keep repeating myself and, and drumming our attention to these things? Because I know very confidently that God uh, was not just mincing words when he told us those things. I knew the source of the revelation. I knew the urgency with which it was delivered. And I'm encouraging you guys. These things are out there for your equipping, for your edification. And it's also there for you to let you, for you to know more about the times that we are in. There is a tone of urgency so that you can appreciate or better familiarize yourself with the emergency that is at hand. The thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that you may have life. But the reason why I'm quoting that scripture to you today is to let you know that the thief is on a rampage right now. And you cannot let him take your joy. You cannot let him take your peace. And you cannot let him Take your righteousness. The way the enemy takes our righteousness is by, is by constantly having us question our identity in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. You are who God says you are, a king and a priest unto your God. No matter what anybody tries to make you feel about the things that you believe, about what God has said to you, about the things that you're fully persuaded of, keep holding on to the righteousness that you are in Christ Jesus. It is important, more significant now than ever before. I believe that with all of my heart. And so guys, let us be diligent in holding on to the profession of our faith. Today, by the grace of God, I have a word yet again from the Holy Spirit unto you. And my message today is titled, Have No Fear. Have No Fear. And I'm gonna begin reading to us today from the book of Psalms chapter 47. I'm going to read verse 1 of Psalms chapter 
47. In fact, before I read that, can I just quickly read to us Psalms 52 verse 5? If you would come with me to Psalms chapter 52 verse 5. It says, God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. You see, this is a judgment that is reserved for the people who have chosen disobedience to the things of God. And the process of uprooting these people, I believe, is currently underway. I believe that there is a lot of uprooting that is going on. There are systems that we have put in place that God wants to uproot and completely do away with forever. Now, this process of uprooting is such that the grounds will shake. It's such that there will be tremor all around us as these things have been uprooted because they have been so deeply rooted into the world that God, into the earth that God created for you and I to inherit and to enjoy. And so when you see there is a mighty shaking around you, it is the hand of God that is at work uprooting. And I know that I think it is important for us to know that because if we don't know that the end of God is in operation, we might find ourselves being afraid. But I know that it is my father that is at work or putting the tears that have been planted by the enemy so that the wheat can be gathered together into the barn of the Lord for the great harvest. Praise the Lord. And so because I know that it is the hand of God by the ministry of his angels that is uprooting the children and the seed of the, uh, and, the, and, and the trees of disobedience, I am not afraid. Every one of us need to know that there is an uprooting going on. It is not because our political systems have failed. It is just. It is not because of the fact that we have been careless. Just because, of course, we know that it was while the servants were asleep that the enemy came to sow the tears into the field that was meant to be for the wheat. But it is not for all of those things because it is not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says God, it is ultimately by grand design for there to be a clearing out of the field so that you can inherit the earth as the Lord promised. For Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. Blessed, they, blessed are the poor in heart for, and the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the earth. Earth. The earth is ours to inherit. It is originally by the plan of God and it will be and it's going to be made new so that all of that which was left after the process of uprooting is not there to cause you and I to stumble. In any case, when you listen to my message from Tuesday last week, you will appreciate more what I'm saying now about God making everything new in the new Jerusalem. But I thought I'd get us started with this one. So that we are aware that the hand of God is in operation and God's hand will not be in operation and you will be hurt in the process. No, his hands are very mindful of you. So be confident that no matter what goes on around, the wicked will be uprooted. But you are the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Psalms 47 verse 1. It says, oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Now the picture that God showed to me that led to this verse of scripture is that when something is going on that is keeping you on the edge of your seat and you're watching as that goal is about to be scored and suddenly you notice that the guy who was supposed to kick in the ball into the net kicks it out of the net. Quite often what do we do? We, we clap our hands like that. Oh snap. Oh no. And the Lord showed to me a picture that some people will clap their hands in the face of what is going on in the country and in the world today. And clap their hands and say, oh snap, because they will think the goal has been missed. But the Lord says, when you clap your hands, let it be in triumph. Because you know that no matter what things look like on the outside, your heavenly father has overcome by his anointed one, Christ Jesus, and given you the victory. So the clapping of your own hands will be unto triumph and say, yes, glory be to God, for he has overcome and he has made us more than conquerors. We need to believe this with all of our hearts because that is what the word of God says. And we need to allow that which the word of God says to guide every action that we make. And why is that important? I will show you in a minute. Come with me to Psalms 47, verse 4. But before we go to Psalms 47, verse 4, I want to pray for you. Because I know that the instruction that I received today and the instruction that came into my heart before being positioned behind this camera 
or, or before or, or in front of this camera to speak is that fear needs to be dealt with. And so that spirit of fear that is trying to get a hold of you needs to be arrested because that fear is clouding your judgment and clogging your vision and is allowing you to see loss when you should see gain and is making you to see defeat where you should see victory. So right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you, brother, sister of mine, dear friend, or just the onlooker. I pray for you that in the mighty name of Jesus, you will come into the peace that the Almighty has made available to you in Christ Jesus, that you would allow Allow every bit of experience that you are having right now to prompt you to give glory to God and to praise his name rather than bowing your head in defeat, in hopelessness, and in disappointment. Let these things miraculously and supernaturally happen in each and every one of the lives that say amen to this prayer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When we agree with the promises that are in the word of God, we are bound to receive the reward. None of us is going to accidentally find ourselves at peace. We need to agree with what the word of God has said. And so if you didn't say amen earlier on, listen to that prayer again and say amen because God is saying, I am going to do it supernaturally and miraculously. It's not going to happen the way men expect it to happen. No one will be able to take credit for the way God is going to bring about deliverance, the way God is going to bring about the triumph. No one will be able to take credit for it. The players may have kicked the ball past the post without hitting the target, but the Lord is still going to bring the point onto your account. Can you imagine that? When you're watching the, the basketball player shoot the ball and the ball misses the, the net, and still, the point on the scoreboard is in your favor. The Lord is saying that I am going to do it by my spirit, by my grace. The kingdom will be restored by the grace of God in such a way that no one will take the honor unto himself. No one will take the credit unto himself or herself. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And today, by the grace of God, I still want to talk a little bit about praising God all day today. I have just found myself praising God, singing mostly hymns. You know, the guys here at the studio were begging me to stop singing because my singing was getting in the way of a lot of what they were doing. But I tell you what, I wouldn't stop. I told them that I wasn't going to stop because I, I couldn't stop. You see, they had to mute my mic after a little while simply because my heart is just overflowing with a theme of praise unto our God. And I want to share some insight with you later on as to why I'm doing that. In fact, let me give you that scoop right now real quick. You see, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. God inhabits the praises of his people. So the more we praise God, not just by singing, sometimes it's just by speaking, or sometimes by just having gratitude pour forth from your heart. Because the reason why you're still standing today is not because you sanitize your hand all the time or because you have built immunity in your body by the food that you've been eating and by the lifestyle you've been keeping. You are standing by the grace of God. And so let gratitude continue to pour out of your heart in submission to God, acknowledging, 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 acknowledging again and again that he is the author and the finish out of your face, that he is your prof protector. He is your provider. He is the glory and the lifter of your head. The more you allow yourself to praise God in that fashion by also singing, by also picking up the phone and sharing a testimony with somebody, by letting somebody know via that post that you're putting up that all glory belongs to God, by letting your actions reflect the confidence that you have in your everlasting Father who never fails. The more you do that, the more you create the ambience of His presence all around you in your heart in your home, in your car, everywhere you go. And when you have that presence of God, you know what it means? It means that God is with you. And when God is with you, you are bold, you are courageous. Like God said to Joshua, he said, you're about to see enemies that you have not seen before. A lot of them will come and they will come with all intimidation, with all pomp and pageantry. He said, but your heart will not be afraid because I am with you. He said to Joshua, be bold, be strong for the Lord your God is with you. So the presence of God is boldness. The presence of God is courage. And so if you're truly not going to have fear, you must have him. You must have his presence. You must have the presence of the Almighty God by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So are you singing yet? Are you praising yet? Are you thankful yet? Is your heart poured out 
praise unto God and giving thanks to him. If it isn't, repent from not doing it and begin to do it. Because the way we have the presence of God in our lives is by continually praising God. Giving him thanks all the time. You know, I told myself that I wouldn't repeat myself as much on this broadcast. Especially not go back to a lot of the things that I've taught just a few weeks back or a few months back. And I'm going to try and stick to that. But this one thing, because those things are there, you can listen to them. But this one thing I need to say to you. Daniel 11.31. The Bible says that the enemy of God's people will come amassing forces, raising opposition against God's people for the purposes of taking away the daily sacrifice. You know when the Messiah comes? My brother was reminding me this of the other day, that when the Messiah comes, every form of sacrifice will be put an end to. Every other form of sacrifice will be ended except for the sacrifice of praise. And so the sacrifice of praise is the most consistent, is the most expected sacrifice. It's the one the Lord God Almighty delights the most in. And so, because he delights in the praises of his people and the songs that pour forth out of Zion, we know that when we praise him, we will get the delight of his face. And the delight of his praise, of his face, is the ambience of his presence. For the Bible says, in the presence of God, there is utmost delight. There is fullness of joy. That word pleasures forevermore actually truly means delight at its utmost intensity. The word forevermore talks about the boundlessness of the measure of that pleasure. And so that pleasure forevermore is not just in terms of the fact that it never ends. It is also in the dimension of intensity saying that it is without measure. And so God takes utmost delight, eternal quantity delight or unquantifiable delight in the praises of his people. And so because we know that the presence of God distills when we praise him, we expect that that is the sacrifice that is being referred to here in Daniel eleven thirty one. 31, because the Lord says, I will be with my people all the time. I will be the light in the midst of them. They will be my people and I will be their God forever and ever. We read that in the book of Revelation chapter 21, chapter 22. We see that the design of the new world, of the new Jerusalem is such that our God will come to live in the midst of us. And what does that mean? If praising God is what brings the presence of God, and God is now going to be with us daily, that means we will praise him daily. And so when the enemy came to take away the daily sacrifice, what he came to do is to contaminate our mouths and to pollute our hearts so that we're not pouring forth praises unto our God. The nature of the experiences that we have been having lately and the events of the world is such that if you are to go by what comes out of the news, the daily death toll attribute, attributed to COVID-19, the, the disappointments that are coming out of all various areas or arenas of our political space, and even some of the things that are happening in, techno in, in the space of technology. I'm not even talking about entertainment gossips right now, but we're even talking about those things that we have always held in high esteem. They, there's a lot of disappointing things and heartbreaking things that are happening right now, such that if we are to remain in the realm of the news, we will not find reasons to give praise to God. That is exactly what the Bible was warning us of in Daniel eleven thirty one, wherein it says that the enemy has gathered forces to take away the daily sacrifices, to take away the praises of God's people. And when you take away the praises of God's people, you take away the presence of God from amongst them. And without the presence of God, we cannot be confident. Without the presence of God, we cannot be bold. Without the presence of God, we cannot be strong because it is by having the presence of God that we have the boldness to say, yes, we can take the land, that we can march boldly to the gates of the enemy and possess the gates of hell. You see, we march towards the gates of hell and possess the gates of our enemies. It is all by the presence of God. And that is the reason why you and I cannot stop praising God, giving him praise, not just for the things that are happening, but for the reason why they are happening. Sometimes because of our humanity, we find it difficult to give God thanks for the things that are happening because it is not that exciting to give God thanks for the fact, for the fact that people are dying and being, are being murdered. 
Christian. It is not, it is not particularly a thing that we do and we say, you know what, oh, I'm just going to keep praising God because people are getting murdered, praise the Lord, or people are dying, praise the Lord. I'm going to give God thanks that there is political chaos. No, we don't give God thanks for those things, but we give God thanks for the reason why they are happening. They are happening because of the fact that the angels of the Lord are here to separate the wheat from the tears and to uproot, just as we read in Psalms 52 verse 5, the workers of iniquity forevermore, to uproot the ones that have deflected from heaven even from before you and I were born. Those ones who were kicked out of heaven and how they are now trying to win other people over to their side to wage war against the Lord's anointed. There is judgment reserved for those people and that judgment has already been implemented and that is the reason why there is so much chaos. We give thanks because of the why behind the what, not just because of the things that are happening. Does it make sense? So I want to encourage you. Don't stop at Daniel 11.31 wherein it says that the enemy takes, comes to take away the daily sacrifices of the people. Let us proceed unto Daniel 11.32 wherein it says, But those who know their God shall be strong and they will do exploits. The, the children of Satan, the children of Satan and the worshippers of Mammon, they know their God. And that is the reason why to some extent they, are, they come across as being stronger than the people of God. But we cannot just continue to say or claim that we are people of God without knowing our God because it is when we know him, know of his consistency, know of his faithfulness, know of the wisdom of his ways. It is when we know that we begin to feel confident and when we begin to get confident, we begin to attribute the praise to him and as we attribute the praise to him, we get more confident because his presence increases amongst us. I encourage you, brethren, praise the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him praise because all these things work together for good to those who love God and the called according to his purpose. Do you not see how in recent times we are being compelled to put our attention on things above and not on things beneath? Because the things that are happening beneath that are temporal are not encouraging. But the things that have already happened above are eternal and they are for your uplifting. So even the situations and the circumstances around us are motivating us, encouraging us, so to speak, and compelling us to give thanks to the Lord always. So I want to say one more time, folks, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Alrighty. So I said I was going to just mention that briefly without repeating myself or re-preaching that message about the daily sacrifice, the daily sacrifices, but that daily sacrifice is praise and your praise needs to keep on going. Praise the Lord. So last verse of scripture, I think for this segment will be the one from Psalms 74 that I mentioned earlier on and we're going to read from verse 4. Psalm 74, verse 4. And what does it say? What does it say, rather? It says, your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, when we started the broadcast, I said, as much as you're keeping yourself updated with what's going on in the news, you cannot take your direction from the news. You cannot allow yourself to be led by the things that you hear, by the agitations around you, simply because Satan, the enemy, Jesus told us that Satan is the enemy. He says, your adversary, the devil. So Satan, the enemy, is very much amongst us. And when I say us, in the world right now, and present with his messengers strategically positioned at places or in places where they can influence your decisions by providing you direction. People will come and tell you, oh, we can't take this anymore. This is how we need to act. Ask yourself, is this the Holy Spirit leading me or am I just allowing people to play and manipulate my emotions? Am I allowing the things that have been said in the news? Am I allowing the things that I'm reading from that blog to inform the direction that I go or do I remain steadfast as a son and daughter of God to allow myself to be led only by the Holy Spirit. We have just read it here in Psalm 74 verse 4 that the enemy has positioned itself amongst the people of God in the place, in 
the place where God has put his name so that he can put up signs. And what are those signs? Those signs are signposts to give direction to you and I. If we are not careful, the devil will give directions to our compassion. Allow for you to have compassion and sympathy for things that are contrary to the will of God. The enemy will give directions to your emotions for you to feel things that lead you in the flesh rather than allow for you to be led in the spirit. I'm going to just read that Psalm 74 verse 4 one more time because I want every one of us to take note of it, to be able to go back on our own and meditate on it. And this is what it says. One more time, Psalm 74 verse 4. It says, your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs in the midst of the meeting place to set up banners for signs. Brethren, don't follow the signs that the enemy is setting up. Signs for trying to war in the flesh. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Let not your strategy for survival, for communication, for exhortation, and for community be dictated by some unknown person emailing you and telling you what to do or by some direction that has been provided in the news or by some concomitances of conspiracy theories. Let your direction and the signs that you follow, be that voice that you hear within you, the voice of the Holy Spirit. In closing, I would like to say this. Have no fear. Don't let your actions be guided by fear. Don't let your actions be guided by a desperate need for self-preservation and survival. Because when you choose that path, the enemy brings in pride into your heart. And that pride will not allow for you to receive help, even the help that the Lord is offering. Let us humble ourselves before the Lord as their children, and he will lift us up. He will fight our battles. Vengeance is the Lord. And he says, I will make sure that you get the justice that is due. The Lord is saying, let me take care of it. No need to fight back. Lay down your sword. I know the reason why you want to tell that person off on social media. The reason why you want to shut that person up is because of the fact that you are passionate, that little by little, this some people are trying to take away your Jesus. Like Peter, when Jesus was being taken away, Peter took up a sword, he drew a sword, and he cut off someone's ear. I know you want to do that. You want to slap somebody's face, you want to chop off their ear, but the Lord is saying, let me do it by my peace. Let me do it in my way. You hold your peace. Trust in me, and don't let the signs that have been put up by the enemy in God's meeting place, in the place where you gather to fellowship with other people, in the place wherein you meditate upon the word of God, in the place wherein you seek guidance, genuine guidance from the Holy Spirit, don't let the enemy infiltrate that place and put up signs that you may be tempted to follow. The word of God says, whether you turn to the left or turn to the right, you will hear a voice saying to you, this is the way. And my prayer for you today is that you will hear that voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you, this is the way. Once again, it's been Moses Anderson from Communion House. And I want to encourage you, make no room for fear by letting every room in your heart be occupied by the Lord God Almighty. And you do that by praising him, by giving him thanks, and by letting gratitude be the order of your day every day, not just on Sundays, not just on Tuesdays. And speaking of Tuesdays, by the grace of God, this coming Tuesday, the 19th of January, we will resume having our Tuesday house to house again in person. Praise the Lord. And for those of you who are saying, well, what's going to happen to us? We're in England, we're in Canada, we're in Australia, we're in different parts of the world, and we've become, we've, we've come accustomed, we've, we've become, I should say, accustomed to joining the house to house life. Good news, house to house life is still going to be on at the same time that we're here in person. So you don't miss a thing. Isn't that awesome? We thank God that we're able to make that possible by the resources that is made available to us. A lot of those resources God has brought into this house 
through the ministry of your obedience, those people who continue to support us by giving to what the work that the Lord is doing in this house. And if you be one of those people that give here, that bring a tithe, that give an offering, that makes a pledge, that redeems a pledge, I want to say, God bless you. Thank you so very dearly. And if you want to partner with us here financially, also at Communion House, I know you may have been praying for us, but I also want to encourage you to extend generosity to what God is doing in this house. And also, it's been made possible by the commitment and dedication of our team here at Communion House. Beginning with my wife, Rosemary Anderson, I want to say thank you for all your support. My son, Joshua Anderson, who produces a lot of our videos, and our associate pastor, um, Will Holiday and his wife, Charlotte Holiday, who continue to ensure that operationally all of these things are running smoothly and are very dearly beloved, Chris Ward who ensures that every platform out there that is mainstream gets to have our broadcast. From Spotify to Google Podcasts to Apple Podcasts to Facebook to YouTube, every one of these platforms now have messages and teachings from Communion House. And we even put up some videos of us, of us hanging out and having fellowship and praising God. And so there, you have no excuse. You don't need to be alone or feel alone. Join this community by the grace of God, and you will enjoy some good, anointed, sweet fellowship. Until the next time, keep studying the word, keep meditating on the word, keep speaking the word, keep doing the word, and also keep sharing the word. Beginning with this post, share with somebody. And I know as you have been blessed, they will be blessed also. God bless you and we'll see you again soon.